So now that 16.1 full release is now out, there's a ton of new updates that have happened. I'm not going to go through all of them. There, there'll be a link in the description going to the full list of everything that was recently updated, but I just wanted to go over a couple of them to kind of give you more of a uh, drive to go out and get the new version. I guess we could start this by going over to the cut page and talking about just a couple of things over there. If you're not familiar with the cut page, what I'm about to show you is really powerful. So let's take a image. Let's take a shot, this shot here. Now we can see that the subject is a little on the right side of the shot, okay? So let's go through and say, let's say we were to cut this. So I'm making a cut here and now this is kind of typical of how an editor would work even on the edit page. This is kind of normal. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut here and I'm going to take this portion of it and butt it up with that, right? So I do that. Now those two portions are butted up. The, the middle chunk I cut out, right? That's kind of normal, right? But here is where it's sort of powerful. So now if I have these selected and I come into here and let's say I pick a portion of the shot. So maybe when she takes her phone and, and like goes up like that, right? So we'll make that as an endpoint, and then we'll come in a little bit and it doesn't really matter where my output is, but let's say that that was my out point. If I come down here to this little button here, what it's going to do is it's going to do what's referred to as a close up, kind of like a punch in. Like let's say you had uh, an interview and you had a wide, let's say it was in 4K, but you're gonna be delivering in 1080. You could take that wide and have that as a shot and then you could punch in almost like it was another angle, right? So kind of gives portions of the project that are getting kind of stale. You would be able to like punch in and kind of change up the, the look of whatever is being presented, right? So that is cool and all, but typically what you're doing is you're going to find the position that you want to, you're gonna be duplicating it, you're gonna be punching in and so forth, right? But here, what I can do is I have this already selected. My playhead is at the beginning of the clip. When I click this, what it's gonna do is it's going to say, okay, the clip that I was just looking at, it's the same clip as what I'm currently bringing in and the the timing is so-and-so. You know, whatever the time code is, is it's going to make a duplicate of that and then it's going to punch in. The new thing here that was added with this is they're using their neural network to predict where a face is. So now if we take a look at this, we're gonna be watching it, right? This is kind of a slow-mo shot, but right when she goes in is when it's going to be punching in and it punches right in on her. As you can see, the cool thing that I think with the edit page is this automatically, you know, it's being positioned based on time code. I think that that's really cool with how the edit page works. Um, for someone like me, it's kind of difficult to implement this thing because I'm so used to doing it the other way without, you know, smart things like this. Uh, but it is really cool. The big thing that they added in with 16.1 going into the full release is now when you do the close up, it automatically looks for a face and it punches in on that area. You know, if it, if it didn't look for the face, maybe it'd punch right in the middle, but as you can see, it's punching in to get her as a subject, the her, you know, everything in her. So I think that that is really cool. Um, they added in a lot more of these little markers here for the different detector, the boring detector, the jump cut, um, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I don't really use them. I thought that it was pretty cool, the whole punching in, you know, finding the faces in the shot and, you know, punching into those faces. I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, and then if you're not used to how the cut page works, automatically positioning the clip based on time code is something pretty cool as well.
There was also a lot of uh, improvements when it comes to working with uh, multi-cam uh, timelines within the cut page. Haven't really, I don't really have much content to, to try that out with that I'm not really going to, to give that a go, but that is something to, if you know, that is something that you're into, it's something to look at, I guess. One of the other things that I seen that was kind of interesting is they changed the wording for the full screen viewer. So uh, wherever your playhead is, obviously you have the feed. Uh, but if you wanted that to be full screen, if you're working with multiple monitors, uh, you could get uh, a couple of different pieces of hardware to do this. But then in 16.1, they also introduced the ability to do it in software to push it to another monitor. Before it was just referred to as a full screen uh, mode, but now they've changed that terminology to be video clean feed. It's the same exact thing. This feature is only in studio, I believe, but if you do have studio and you want to display wherever the playhead is, you now have that ability to do it here, but it's now under clean or video clean feed instead of full screen view. I believe that's what it was previously. Performance improvements have been made there as well. So now if I come over to the edit page, there has been these things in uh, DaVinci Resolve for a little bit of time now. Uh, the adjustment clips. So if I bring an adjustment clip on now one of the new things that you can do with adjustment clips is in the inspector I can now come in here and edit this and Then you'll see it down here one of the other things that they also Implemented is the ability to bring it back into the uh, media pool without doing any like uh, compound clip sort of thing. So now we can just take this and whatever changes this has, we'll just add a little uh, zoom in there. We can now bring it in to the uh, media pool and then use that at a later date. And when I was looking at this, not everything is copied over. It seems like there's a couple of select things. So if I was to, let's say, take this, let's just make this a one. If I was to change the color of this and maybe, uh, put a marker, well, let's put a marker actually on it. So if I was to change the color of it, maybe put a marker on it, and now I bring it up into here, and now I drag it down, those things still don't copy over. Um, there's been a, a lot of people that have been asking me to use these to make um, transitions, but uh, until things like this get implemented, there's a lot of reasons as to why I'm not going to do that. But that is now an ability that you can now do. Um, so being able to drag into the media pool. If you're into making shortcuts for just about everything, I have some shortcuts to do some weird stuff like change the colors, cut, um, do specialty cuts um, like that and whatnot. But if you're into making shortcuts for just about everything, you can now make shortcuts to open and close the different windows as well. So that is now over here in the uh, keyboard customization. You can now pick all the different elements and open and close them with keyboard shortcuts if that is something um, that you're interested in doing. So overall, there's been a lot of uh, performance improvements added to just about every page. Each page has you know slightly different things. For like Fusion, there's been a lot of emphasis on multi-GPU and memory management sort of things. There hasn't been a lot that was introduced to the Fusion page. There was uh, one thing that I that I seen that was kind of cool uh, because the Fusion page takes advantage of a lot of open effects and Fusion effects. Uh, one of the uh, effects that I seen that was new was... Um, I believe it yeah the stop motion um, that's one of the new effects that was added in uh, now in here we now have the ability to do like a stop motion ish thing if that's something that you're interested in but that was uh, recently added that might be interesting using infusion haven't I haven't really thought of ideas for it but it could definitely be something that, that might be interesting to use in Fusion. We'll have to see. Uh, I'll get back to you on that one. Also, the uh, open effects as well as the Fusion effects now have the ability to manipulate 
the alpha channel. So that is a thing. I don't really use too many um, open effects. I did in the past and then they're getting kind of, um, they weren't that stable. So I kind of just got rid of all of mine, but now they have the ability to affect the alpha channel which could be interesting um depending on what kind of effects that you have uh, but that is something that is uh relatively new i thought it was there but i guess i was uh, wrong the color page has seen some improvements when it comes to uh stuff like rec 2020 hdr stuff i think that we are going to continuously see this thing changed i don't think a lot of people know how to get hdr mode turned on in davinci resolve it is a thing it does exist it's not on by default but it is there um, there's a lot of issues with different monitors you know going from one platform to another platform dealing with hdr the conversion stuff like that hopefully over time this gets a little easier but right now it's it is in davinci resolve you can turn it on uh, but over time, they are going to be adding in a lot more of improvements when it deals with knit values and all these sort of things. I think that it's going to continuously be um, implemented because a lot of people I've seen that are getting HDR content and bringing it in and they're like, oh, it's washed out, all this and that. It's just these real conversions that people aren't uh, accustomed to dealing with yet. Um, hopefully in, you know... And sometime soon, uh, you know, I'll get the equipment that I can then play around with it. I do not have an HDR monitor to really uh, play with like Rec 2020 and stuff like that. So till I get the time to play with that and get more comfortable around it. I did read a really good article about a, a production company actually doing a full project with it. Um, seemed sort of interesting, but... Um, yeah, I haven't. I don't really have much experience, but I con constantly keep seeing um, different improvements being added into the color page when it comes to um, HDR stuff. So that's something to to look out for um, if you're into doing that and have the uh, equipment that you can do that kind of stuff with. So, just like I was saying, every uh, page got a little bit of something. Fairlight also had uh, a couple of improvements. I wish I could. You know explain to you the how good they are how not so good they are i'm not a uh, audio person so if you are in audio like i said link will be in the description to all the notes and i do apologize for it but yeah i'm not really going to you know say the things that were in, introduced if they were you know worthy or if they were a good improvement or eh, meh so there was also some stuff with the delivery and media pages when it comes to rendering out there was some stuff on there i was like okay i didn't know that it was something that you know people were experiencing but when you're i guess delivering with quicktime and it's to a network device I didn't know that there was, you know, performance issues, but uh, they improve them if you were having issues with <laughs> rendering QuickTime on a network device. Uh, but yeah, so that was improved. In general, they said just overall performance. Um, seems like that was, you know, a common thing that was uh, kept coming up on all of the notes. Um, they also said that the live saves, I don't know if, if you haven't seen my video about uh, like live saves and um, all the different increment, in, incremental version differences uh, that DaVinci Resolve does. So let's say you do something, you save it, and you're like, oh shit, I didn't want to do that. You can go back in the other versions. I made a whole video about that and backing up and backups and auto backups and um, the live save and how all that works. But take a look at that video if you haven't seen it. But uh, what they ended up doing is they improve the live save, which is when you, whenever you make a change, it automatically saves. Um, so you don't have to be concerned with making sure that you save. Uh, whenever you do like an adjustment, it automatically saves. So if you have a crash, you don't lose anything because it's always saving every um, change that you do. So, and hopefully this helps everyone. There was an overall stability improvements um, but like computer hardware, there's a million different configurations. They can't help, you know, every single configuration, but overall 
there was uh, improvements on stability across a lot of platforms so but yeah there is a lot of new improvements and a lot of new updates for DaVinci Resolve 16.1. I highly recommend people get it and, you know, experience it. I would also make sure that you back up your database before you do do the update uh, in case there is some type of issue with your hardware and you do need to go back to, let's say, 16 or if you've been on a previous version of 15, going back to 15.3 if you're on a previous version of 15 below 15.3 i would highly recommend getting 15.3 um, and if you are on any version of 16 getting 16.1 getting off of a beta there is no reason to be on a beta all of the updates are free if you're on the free version or if you're on the studio version all updates are absolutely free uh, but yeah so there is that um uh, let me know in the comments if you are still using an older version why you're still using the older version if you do keep up with the new versions uh are there any improvements that you've seen any little things here and there because they do add in a lot of stuff that they don't uh write about in their update uh pdf there are sometimes i i come across things and i'm like whoa that's changed that's different like the uh, switching of the names for the full screen viewer, um, that is something that I actually go back and look at my blog and it did say, you know, full screen view. So uh, they, they do these like little changes here and there Well, they'll just kind of not really talk about the, the, the change in name or whatever it may be. So if there was something that you've noticed that, you know, let me let me know if there was other updates that weren't talked about in the uh, press release. I'd be interested in knowing about those too. But I think that kind of covers everything that I want to talk about today and about the updates. Um, yeah. If you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, maybe you're working on a project and you need a question answered, I have a Facebook group down in the description that you can take a look at. Uh, ask your question there and someone in the community will definitely be able to help you out. Uh, I think that kind of covers everything here that I wanted to talk about. Well, with that being said, my name's Jaren. Thanks for watching, guys.